I like when you tell me about DeFi and Web3, Pop. Hey, I'm, I'm seducing you. <laughs> so, Lana. Hey. What is the mic? Welcome. The good? Hey, let me do the intro. <laughs> Welcome back to the Smart Nonsense Podcast. We talk about our entrepreneurship, self-development, challenge. Look at your haircut, Pop. Got it again. <laughs> yeah, what do you think? You look great. I think people should go on YouTube. They should watch this because, Pop, we're getting the TNT scientist. Oh, yeah. Hey, if you know how to do titles and thumbnails, come work with us. Mm-hmm. We don't know what we're doing. Yes, please. Oh, I like you. I turned up the gas. I can hear you better now. Hey, we, we fired it up. Ah! We fired it up, baby. Oh, See, that's too hot. Oh, I thought that was for headphones. Well, okay. It is. Here's the problem. And then we're, we're blowing straight past this because it is not why we're on the pod today. The problem is Smart Nonsense Podcast episodes, content, unbelievable. Where else can you get this? Unbelievable. All right. Two, two co-founders talking about everything under the sun. Thumbnails, freaking best on YouTube. Best in the game. Beautiful. Titles, mm-hmm. trash. <laughs> trash. They're not optimized yeah. for growth. Yeah, we realized, hey, we had this we had this realization. We're looking through Darmesh, one of our clients. He's like, hey, your TNT, your titles, your actually thumbnails and titles, if you go that order, because uh, thumbnail, we abbreviate TN and title is a T, TNT. Oh, I didn't actually get that. <laughs> you didn't get it? No. Ah, fuck. I guess That's I should have done TN plus T and then the little explosion. But TNT, dope-ish, put a little fucking bomb going off i love that i don't think it edits these <laughs> no <laughs> you never know you never know but uh so here's the deal i forget what i was talking about oh yeah you get these soap things like we we get pistol pete coming in hey pistol we want you to <laughs> <laughs> this is just inside pistol. jokes it's pistol. amazing <laughs> Dude joins the company, never talked to him. We just call him Pistol Pete right out of the gate. And it's a butthole Pete, thumbnail. Your first, your first thumbnail is going to be a butthole. Put it up <laughs> as vulgar as possible. The wait, title, wait, wait, wait. Company folklore. Um, If you go on YouTube and you look at the butthole thumbnail, it's, I don't know what episode. Pistol Pete's first version was a real butthole with no censorship. <laughs> I saw it. I saw it. I looked straight into the wrinkly butthole. <laughs> straight into it. Senator President Dave, our graphic artist, is like, <laughs> he's like, hey, he's like, Pistol Pete. Uh, I think that he, he said it in the nicest way. He's like, I think this is going to get pulled by YouTube. And it's like, yes, <laughs> sir. So now I think that's what yeah. we want to see. We want to see you hit the extreme. We'll dial it back. It's all good. But the the moral of the story is we title that anal fissures and freedom. And it's like, how is that ever going to rank with any SEO? Who's searching for that? It's going to be like an 80-year-old woman who's like, what is this podcast about business, entrepreneurship, self-development? Hey, watch this on YouTube. But the ones you, you titled more generically for search with an emphasis on growth, those like those do great. <laughs> Right. The, our best performing video is like how to start a remote company for lazy people. And I actually thought about the SEO of that. And we can do hey, it. Hey, we just we just don't want to. So we need someone to specialize in it. Let me right. let me hit you with another one before we get into the meat of this episode, Pop. This one's for the oh, listeners. No. This one's for the listeners. Oh, nice. I want to know, because this happens to us, I'd say every two, every three nights. This thing happens, all right? It's about 9 p.m. Central, 10 p.m. Central. And we get the giggles. We get pop. People need to know why we get the giggles. Hey, that Tomas hour. <laughs> it's Tomas hour. So my question. Well, I don't know if it's a question. It sounds kind of specific. I, I can't out Tomas like this. I can't out Tomas like this. I can't tell him what he did. Hey, you just kind of <laughs> string him like that. The little dollar bill we chasing. <laughs> I can't. We speak. It's it's not entrepreneurship, <laughs> self development, challenging norms. It's just wet dreams. Uh, well, you outed him. How about that? In in a mosquito Onward. net. Uh, Onward. Okay. Good thing he doesn't listen. None of our friends listen. Uh, Three in a one week trip we, in Tanzania. Pistol Pete, put that in the thumbnail. How about <laughs> fuck the SEO? <laughs> uh, wet dreams in a mosquito net. Pistol, cook it up. All right. Uh, <laughs> Wet dreams in my willy. 
Hey, here's why we fire this puppy up, because we're always strapped. I like it. You're like, let's shoot a pod. Five minutes later, we're on the pod. Who knows what we're going to talk about. Are you going to be here live? Oh, in per- on Friday. Friday, That's what fuck we, yeah. We got to get a uh, fucking uh, D-Gens. D-Gens okay. ripping. Okay. Ian's ignoring us, but we're going to get him on. We still got that Miami story from like six months ago. Best weekend of his life. Never heard it. Uh, a lot of shit. <laughs> Slick just texted me today, actually. He's like, hey, did you know on-chains or on-chain? Fucking on-chain. Uh, Uniswap's like market cap for their coins is $4 billion. I'm like, wow, that, that's fucking, that's a lot. And it's probably like, I don't know how many people, but it's probably like a 30 person company. So what's the math on that? Uh, 10? Ian's rich. Wait. Oh, 100, is that 100 million value per person? If you did like hey, if you normal even. company. But uh, crazy shit. And now that I'm like getting into Web3, I'm like, oh, Uniswap is amazing. Cause Uniswap, it, it's basically like Coinbase. Uh, well, it's like you can exchange all these different tokens with each other. Or, or coins, I should say. Um, so say you have Bitcoin and you want Ethereum or you have Ethereum and you want fucking Solana, whatever it is. You just go into the little Uniswap protocol. That shit swaps it for you. But there's, <laughs> you don't need a company. It just fucking does it because it's code. It's beautiful. It's, I like it's DeFi. When, I, like, I like when you tell me about DeFi and Web3, Pop. Hey, I'm, I'm seducing you. <laughs> Solana. Hey. So, hey, I don't know. I'm just learning the things as we go. But hey, a, a great uh, bit clout that my first million that just dropped like a day or two ago for everyone else is going to be like a Let's month link ago. Let's link it. It's really good. It's really good. Web3 is going to be dope. I, I'm more ambitious than I thought. Uh, but the... The main idea from Web3, hey, let's fucking derail this thing some more. <laughs> the, the main idea of Web3 is like once you have your audience, once you're an actual creative that people care about, that's when you can monetize better than any other way in Web2 right now. Because Web2, you're basically getting the scrap ad revenue and trying to figure out who can sponsor you. It, it's really inefficient and you get YouTube and Facebook and Twitter stealing a lot of your money. So it's just like, hey, take out the fucking middleman. Let's just make code, give you uh, give you the goods right away. And BitCloud's dope. It's like, hey, smart nonsense. We get a lot of people telling us they want to invest in us. We don't need the money, but if we did, we'd be like, okay, buy our coin. That inflates the value. Then we can sell our coin and make some money, put that into better video production if we wanted, and then that keeps increasing our coin. So it lets people monetize earlier on, creatives in particular, and it's beautiful. So listen to that episode. I'm getting entranced. You uh, are. Um, we don't need the um, degen. Um, uh, what do we call him? Liaison. A uh, freaking <laughs> resident. Re- resident degen. You're the resident degen. Hey, look at me. I like yes, that shirt. I, am. I hey, like that shirt. You like it? I just got it. Uh, <laughs> so here's the problem, oh, here's Pop. No, 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 no. Let me let me tease my love hate relationship. More. All right. No, sh- I don't care about that. What I wanted to say, because we left this out on the last pod when you talked about Naval shouting us out. And there's smart nonsense out there making videos and cool animations out of it. We're just like, hey, it's really dope. Those are our idols. Like no one understands how important this is to us. But what we're overlooking is why did he shout us out? He shouted us out because he's like, hey, creators that want to, they call it recompose. So one person composes the media and then say we're coming in recomposing it, basically making clips, making dope shit on top of it. Those people can benefit greatly from this Web3. Those are the people where uh, I don't know how exactly it would work because I'm not smart enough, but basically Naval gets it. Maybe we buy the rights to repurpose and then we can monetize that. And anyone that buys it, we we get uh, a cut from any time it trades in, in like the secondary marketplace. Basically, he's saying, Yo, smart nonsense guys, Web3 is for you. Like mm. you're building an audience. Once this shit picks up and everyone flocks there, you're gonna be the ones to benefit the most out of this. That's why I'm so, like, oh, we should start learning about it now. So, so we, we should be minting, right away. We should be minting these his clips. Well, it's Naval sounds like he doesn't want to do that. Like, I, I don't know what Naval's uh, gonna do, but say all in podcast, for example. I don't know exactly how it worked, but they have maybe the rights to it. They can sell the full episode if they want it or something. Um, and then we can like recompose it. So I don't know if we buy buy the ability, like say we give them a cutback or, or um, whatever you call that, a kickback. It's like 10% of whatever we make you get because it's your original stuff. And it's all in code. So it's never like you don't have to do contracts and stuff. It just automatically happens. 
It's like, hey, uh, David Sachs, any clip we make for you, we'll give you 10% of whatever we make off of it. You do no work. And now anytime it trades forever, he'll be making that. Should we and do that shit? We'll be making it. Well, I don't think it's popped off quite well. We don't have a big enough audience probably yet for it to make sense. That's why step one is just build the fuck out of smart nonsense audience. Okay. And then once people care about us and our brand, then it's going to be more valuable. So nice. this is why the next year we just fucking head down. But what are we all, uh, our other business realizations? Yeah, sorry, transition. yeah, leave it. <laughs> fuck, I almost had it. Pop, I almost had it. Pop, it was a good transition. Are you going to talk about the agencies? I want you to talk about it because no, I've been staying I out of that iMessage. No, Pop. No, fuck them. All right. Free, F- remember, when, remember when we said fuck them to free? Fuck, fuck agencies. Okay. Fuck them. Fuck every little bit of them. I have been running an experiment. Pop, you can't do that. I see your butt crack. <laughs> hey, <I've, laughs> Pistol Pete needs the content, dude. Oh, it was yours. Um, So... Uh, our agency, oh my God, there's so much here. Our agency operates like a product, which is magical. I love it. I think it's working. You and I figured out 10. the org chart that 10 for 10, it grows, it scales. Everyone knows what they're doing. There's freedom and responsibility. We have dreams of someday building something else that I don't really want to talk about because someone might actually what? build it fast. I don't know. Nah. Okay, whatever. I don't really know when these episodes come out anymore. It's kind of scary. We're not working on the thing. And there are a lot of people watching us. Like Henry Belcaster's intern. I don't know what that guy's up to. Scary. He's a lot of coffee shit going on. A lot of coffee shit going on. He brought me this one. So (laughs) I've been running some experiments. Um, Did we talk about our A-list celeb? Fuck them, dude. Fuck, Fuck it. the we agency. Just talk about them. I don't care anymore. <laughs> Will Smith's well, team. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about them openly. How about that? Out them. I I forgot what I was gonna say. <laughs> Will Smith's team. All right, they come to us. They're asking for a one-off project, which is a one-off of the one-off. We'll get back to that. All right, a one-off project. It's not something we would really ever do or touch as an agency unless someone was working with us long term and it was like a fun project, but it's not. And it kind of sucked and it was a silly idea and it was trite, okay? Trite? Trite. Hey, can we say numbers and stuff? I think we're allowed to say numbers. What kind of numbers? They gave us the numbers before uh, NDA was signed. I don't know if we want to, Wana would be mad if we said the numbers because that's our, that's our- um, I think that's fine though. That's our leverage. I don't really care anymore. 10 for 10s are shit. Uh, That's what we pitched them. We're not really trying to do the- Hit them. I, I think we just say it. So basically, they they hit us. They're like this one guy. Uh, I don't. Maybe I won't say his name, but yeah, he don't do that. Me, he's like, yo, I saw your Naval clips. Shit popped off. We're looking to do the same thing. Let's do ten of them for Will's upcoming book launch. We're like, dope. That's sick. And we read through this giant email, and at the end, it's like these ten clips. They're maybe like 15, 20 seconds long. And if I could wave a magic wand, we'd pay like less than 40 grand for them I'm like oh that's a lot of money for 10 that clips is. and this is this is like normally we do 10 for 10 so it's like oh this is instantly they're willing to pay almost four times as much this was like charge. half or a fourth of the time so like there was some premium right right, right. for that urgency and it derailed our team uh in multiple ways that we'll get into but it was it was like holy shit maybe we're not charging as much as we could hollywood right. they have okay, a lot more money they're used to spending crazy amounts so that was all fine and well and the 10 clips we're doing for them are totally in our wheelhouse the team crushed them they're amazing mm, we didn't have to sick. retool they're like they're mm, probably some of the best work we've mm. ever done oh the thought it just ran into my head and out the other other side that's pop. okay that's okay well basically uh it's interesting <laughs> that's, okay. Get this- <laughs> that's okay that's <laughs> okay we get this massive client that we're stoked about and they're already offering us all these opportunities with other big ass clients that they're connected to. I'm like, oh my God, we're going to storm Hollywood. I remember what the point. Want? I remember okay. the point, Pop. The 10 clips were fine. It was the the timelines and the one-offness and the urgency that totally turned us into an agency and derailed everything we were doing. So really we have to quickly. turn these 10 clips around instead of in a month, based on our product, we had to do it in like six days, which meant taking half of the Smart Nonsense family 
and shifting them into this thing. That means smart nonsense doesn't get produced. All in doesn't get produced. Naval doesn't get produced. We're not blitzing anyone for those two weeks. You know, we've got right. 12 people or whatever working on this one-off project. So that's where we st- the the flaw of an agency is like there's no forecasting. It's on a project by project basis. Everyone's moving around. There's no organization. We're in like this crazy email thread with 15 people. They keep asking for oh, calls. Dude, well, you and I are the, the middlemen. Thing. We we realized we're like, hey, this is what we talked about. I think on the last podcast, we're like, we're lucky enough that we went from business to creative world. So we we take all these business ideas, we know how to run that shit well, and now we just apply creativity to that. Versus they're creatives that are trying to learn business pro or retroactively, and it's it's just not working because we have these giant email threads, uh, which gets even interesting. We'll, we'll get back to it, but giant email threads. Now we're like, hey, how do we talk? They're like, honestly, text is the best. But now I'm trying to like, I don't want to mix fucking church and state and get all my like personal life mixed up with Westbrook. Like it's just, it's chaos. And so we're quickly realizing like, holy fuck, this is how the world normally runs. This is, this is crazy. This is normal for them. And somehow Belky, you get roped into it because I didn't want to deal with their shit. I I just said like, hey, let's just say no to this little one-off project. Okay. So, right. We'll talk about that saying no versus the experiment I ran. What blows my mind is that any agency can get quality work done, r- operating as they operate. Uh, what did you tell me the other day? You're like, here's why these people can get away with this is because creatives, because they can't monetize, because Web3 is not a thing and you're always scrapping, you're trying to find the next job, they're willing to do whatever. It's like, hey, we need this turnaround ASAP by tomorrow, which is never actually true. But like, can you do it? And then you spend the whole fucking night working on it and and being essentially their bitch because you need the money because it's so hard to monetize as a Hey, that was a hot take. That was a hot take. Right. So what happens is the the 10-clip project, that's great. It's fine. It's wrapping up. I'm glad we did it. Um, It's fun. No, I I like that. It was was great. Yeah. The team's fucked right now organizationally, (laughs) but we'll figure that out. Um, So then they asked for- they, the dust will settle. They asked the agency dust will settle. They asked for this other project, which was just like a one-off hype trailer for Twitter or something or socials. And I'm like, right. You're like, we should just say no to this. And I'm like, we should just say no to this because it's not in our wheelhouse. You have to like adamantly refuse these things. If so, mm-hmm. but then I'm like, we have dreams of building some other tool, some other thing in the future. Let me run an experiment on her. And the point you just raised came from this notion that these agencies, these people don't get in trouble for these fire drills because they can always find a creator who will do the job in 12 hours or 24 hours. They will always find that creator because us, having been creators, know that it's hard to monetize, it's hard to find jobs, it's hard to get money. So when Will Smith's team hits you up, like we need this in 24 hours, you can't just be like, no, I refuse, I need one week's notice. You just do it. As the right. creative. It's funny. A lot of this comes down to uh, literally everything in life. Hey, kind of economics. Like it's, it's very much sort of supply and demand or in our terms, like scarcity versus abundance. Like if we had a ton of Will Smith jobs, we'd be okay. Be like, no, we don't want to fucking deal with that. We, we only do 10 for 10, but it's, it's a Will Smith, a list celebrity. We don't get these that often. It's like, Hey, we'll bend over backwards for you guys. Granted, now we're kind of giving them some pushback because we're like, hey, we, we don't actually need this. It's not like we're talking to Will on a day-to-day basis. He's just seeing our clips and it's kind of cool for us. But uh, plus, maybe he'll tag us in his fucking post and that would be sick because we get a lot of traffic. But uh, it's not that it, big of a deal. But it's everything from business to relationships to just like money with friends. Like If you have a lot of something, you're so okay to give or turn away anything you don't want. But the second you're like, like looking for the next thing you you get into drama like uh what happened in me with my personal life right now I'm Mr. Oh, yeah, drama. you are mr drama that's that's too much to handle too much um, no i don't want to get into it but that's the the main issue at hand is scarcity versus abundance yeah okay so um where does this take us my love well, relationship you, you, for you, agencies you sign on for this project and now you've just been bending over oh, backwards for the last 24 the project. hours right the so asap Right. I'm running an experiment to see like, just like, what does the process look on their end? Like, 
they are the premier agency, right? They're doing marketing for Will Smith. If they need something, what does that process look like for them? I want to solve that problem. So I'm like, let me just run the experiment. I'll do it. I'm in for it. And what happened? Everything we would have anticipated happening happened. It's like as the day goes on, she's adding things to the high level um, idea for the trailer. The high level idea for her trailer made no sense. It, it was really consi- goofy. I think we can, can we put the, we can probably put messages in Maybe or like we can just summarize. Words. Basically it's, it's like, Hey, uh, ask after ask, Hey, we're going to modify it a little bit. It's super simple and straightforward and has this like five word descriptor for whatever the project is that made no sense. I wish, I wish I had it up. I, I can probably pull it up. Yeah. Right. right. So I'm like, I, I wanted to see how do people communicate with editors? Um, right. And it's like, I, I had an editor working on this project. I gave him six hours to do it. And I know that if that editor is going to crush something at six hours, they have to have full creative control. I'm like, here's the one sentence high level. Here's some pictures and video you can use. Go make the thing. Mm-hmm. And they made a pretty good thing given it was six hours and urgent. The problem is as the day was going on, they're adding to the thing. They're subbing in new sound bites. They're coming up with new ideas. They're removing things. I'm like... Guys, like you can't create good stuff like this. So it was really. I wonder if they they might be used to the old world where you're working in person with the creative and you can just like, oh, here, just sub it in really quick, and it's super easy and simple. That's you're web talking zero. To them fist. That's web zero. We're not in that anymore. Right. Uh, what I what I like, and I told you this. They're like, oh, it's super simple and straightforward. Oh. Meanwhile, they describe it, and and I quote. Uh, <laughs> We want to do a kind of fake trailer title card type asset. What? That's fake bad. trailer title card type. What? what? And, it's and bad? She's like, no, it's super simple, super straightforward. It's, and like you told me, don't tell a creative, don't tell anybody you're managing that something is super straightforward. Right. Because you're not doing the work. It's, it's like, hey, don't bitch. It's super easy. Why would you bitch? It's and it's it's your job. Like, and by the way, just, I'm doing her a massive f- favor, and I don't expect to be paid. Right, for we're not this charging thing. for it. And I'm I'm out of pocket on this editor, but it's just really interesting to me. the The penultimate, or the ultimate, is we turn this thing in three revisions later. Person's working on it overnight, and she's like, "Oh, this is just missing the mark. We can have it in by Friday, two days from now." I'm like. Can we now? So this wasn't ASAP. That's Did what's you not happening. see that? I've been oh, avoiding it. They scrapped it. it. They scrapped it. They re-recorded the sound bite. They want something new. Oh, you you not in it. I ain't been looking. That's the punchline, all, Pop. All I see is her asking for another thing every 30 minutes, and you're just like on it. Just like, got it. Yeah, Let's yeah. do it. And a little praying thing, like fucking. Let I'm just so curious. What is her like? Yes, yes, yes. Project look like. Um, now I'm at the breaking point, and I don't care anymore. So I might have to uh, wrap things up. But <laughs> well, she wants. Here, she recorded something new. She wants something new. Fuck yeah! So I'm the like, funny thing is, okay, we go through all of this like hula hoop jumping shit, and it's it's very much if you're into the Naval mindset. We actually did a clip on this, which we can put up. It's fucking sexy. No one is going to value you more than you value yourself. So always factor your time into every decision. You buy something from Amazon, they screwed it up, you have to return it. Is it worth your time to return it? Is it worth the mental hassle? So set a very high hourly aspirational rate for yourself and stick to it. And it should seem and feel absurdly high. If it doesn't, it's not high enough. And whatever you picked, my advice to you would be raise it. But it's like set an aspirational hourly rate. And we're always like, hey, $5,000. Granted, it's hard to actually... Uh, adhere to that, but that's our goal. And if we're charging five thousand dollars an hour, then Belky, you just you should invoice them a hundred thousand dollars for the last day of <laughs> headaches. And- but it, well, it's a it's a proactive mindset. It's um, if this thing for them doesn't touch anywhere near five thousand dollars per hour per hour, I should just say no to it right off the bat. Right, right. Which is I, I could see from a mile away. I'm like, this is. This is not our wheelhouse. We should just say no to it. But we want to run this experiment at the same time, see how they normally function. Because this would be potential client of or a customer of whatever we would create in the future. Right. But uh, but it made us realize we're like, hey, we're jumping through all these hoops. 
they still haven't paid that original like we didn't end up charging them as much oh. as we want to work with them in the long term but they still haven't paid the invoice so i'm like all right let's at least get paid so it doesn't feel like as much of an l that we're taking so i send the invoice and the person that they told me to invoice a week ago uh responds back within like five minutes and he's like hey i'm no longer with westbrook media please send any request to this person and this person and any media needs to this other person and i'm like belky excuse me belky excuse me <laughs> This person who is no longer with this media company is the head of the project we're working on. <laughs> There's no warning. There's, There's no, no warning. warning. It, it's just wait, wait. That was that was the person we sent the ten for ten. Uh, this is this is how we work. We don't do. Uh, I'm gonna. There's so many yawns in the the fucking dude floating the, around the agency. They're just all floating. Um, the that was who we talked to with Camille about. The having, post uh, supervisor for our project is this person. Right, right. That was the person that told us about this other large company that's doing a collab with Will Smith and they want us to work on it. I don't that's know. That's the same person? I don't know. There's so many I'm people. Pretty, we're, we're, <laughs> well, basically, I think this was the person that we're like, he, he was asking us to do this big project. And we're like, hey, we just do 10 for 10. And then we sent him this thing and haven't heard back. Apparently, they don't no, give no, two no, no. notices. No, that, that's somebody oh, else. That's a different person. Who is now who, who you're supposed to send the invoice to. Oh, that's who that was? Look. Dude, I'm so lost in the sauce. This is the agency runaround, okay? When you come to work with Smart Nonsense Media, the entire organization looks identical. Everything's right. identical. So when a new client comes in, everyone on our team knows they need a graphic artist, an animator, um, somebody to rough cut, and uh, basically one person that oversees them. That's everywhere inside the company. That's all we do. Right. It's one thing. Right. Cookie cutter. <sighs> this it's is a mess. It's fucking beautiful. And then you get here and it's like there are 30 cooks in the kitchen. Who's our liaison? Who's our touch point? Apparently they're dropping off like flies and it's like, what the fuck? What's going on? So... We're realizing, hey, we got to push these projects away. We don't want to do them anymore. Uh, we realize there is a lot of demand, though, for video and for people to hire their own video people, like um, an ex-client of ours, My First Million, one of the, the guys, Sam Parr. He's like, hey, I want to I wanna hire a video editor for cheap overseas. How do I do it? I'm like, dude, you're a clown. Like, but there are all these people always asking us for this, so. We're, we're His company, also a revolving door. Also an agency-like revolving door. Unbelievable. It's And what I realized is this, because you have Westbrook and they're... Take Westbrook, take... Uh, who's the top shot people? Uh, Dapper <laughs> Labs. Take uh, My First Million. They're all cracked out all the time. They're fucking like... They're literally... They're like jittery on cocaine sort of thing on the calls, all discombobulated. I remember I heard about business and everyone had like an agenda coming into meetings and it was super... Uh, prepared and I, I thought Todd when I worked for him that was just uh, an exception but everyone runs like this and I get it because it's like startups move fast but it's so chaotic and they have such poor communication that that's why people are fucking turning or churning so often it's just so, they're just like luckily we had they're had just that. very short short term focused they're they're just like always looking for the next thing the next fix that we're like guys we think in six month loops we want to be with you for three years. This is going to take a long time to do organically. Well, it's brand building. It's brand building. Like, and I think a lot of these people, well, they got their revolving doors, but then they also come to us trying to get famous quick, get rich quick. It's like, there's no shortcut. Right. Just Hey, what did Zachariah content. say? I haven't, I haven't opened that yet. Oh, I don't know. Did Something he, did he give pushback on 60 second things? Uh, he know. wants to do a mix of short. Hey, this, hey, come on, this pod. <laughs> Hey, okay. All right. <laughs> well, okay. So that's basically, this morning was interesting because I had 50% of my morning was agency stuff. 50% of the morning was the smart nonsense, like more productized, like our team just automatic running. And actually I was reading this book called The Minimalist Entrepreneur. And it's not necessarily that we've productized smart nonsense, but we've processized it. Mm. So everything, all the processes are in place. They have their set rules. The next step, if we wanted to productize it, would actually be using tech and software and automation, but we're processized. What's interesting about, what is it, QSBC or something like that? It's it's that exception for paying taxes where in five years, if we sell, then we don't have to pay 
like whatever our income bracket tax rate is, it's, it's somehow, uh, it's like treated as a capital gain tax. <laughs> it's or something, but basically you have to be a product. Like it doesn't apply to services. So that's why I think it is important that we are this 10 for 10 company. We give them a product as in you get 10 clips versus mm-hmm. like, oh, it's custom for every client. And it's, it's kind of like, oh, a lawyer sort of deal. Uh, we don't want to be that because then we probably wouldn't, we'd be paying fucking like 40% more in taxes. That's interesting. I didn't something know Something that was... would be a lot. It'd be millions of dollars. Yeah, I didn't know it was product focused. Right. So that's why it's good that we're pushing in that direction naturally. So um, I think that's it other than Aloha Ben, but fuck him. It doesn't make sense. It was just giggly. Oh, it's, it's so <laughs> it's an inside joke. That's to rap. You know, that's that's when you get the Tomas hour giggles, the wet dream giggles. <laughs> all right. It's like a lot of inside jokes. Get to, I <laughs> wish we could share them with the world. They're just cream of the crop content from you, Pop. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's them coming in yesterday being like ASAP. We need this today. <laughs> and we're like, we we didn't tell them, but we don't do ASAP. And then it takes like hours and hours and hours to do this. And they keep updating and keep updating. And then finally, like this chick that we're talking to, this chick, this woman that we're talking to, she's she's like, hey, yeah, I'm bringing in this other person, Ben. And uh, I'd probably say, dude, so, it was a guy. I feel like I'm, I'm just, it doesn't matter. So this woman's on the East Coast. It's nearing midnight her time. She brings in a colleague who I know is on the West Coast, uh, loops him in. I'm central time. It's 11. And then then what happens? Well, it's basically like we have, they told us we have till the end of the day. And so we're like, we just got to pretend like we're not only on central time. No, we're, we're fucking in Hawaii. Like we got to the end of our day. No, so like first you're when like, Ben comes into the chat. Dude, you're like, um, we're on Cal- Pacific end of day. And I'm laughing. I'm like, nah, Hawaii end of day. And you just hit me with the aloha, Ben. <laughs> God, it's not funny when we talk oh, after the fact. Oh, we in Hawaii now. That's it, Pop. <laughs> That's so sad. <laughs>